August 29th, Camden Falls Gallery, another delivery from Paul Garnett, Mutiny on the Bounty, April 28th, 1789. Take it away, Paul. Yeah, Howard, this is a painting of the very famous Mutiny on the Bounty that took place in the South Pacific in 1789. Uh, what you see here is the ship almost becalmed in this very, very oily sea with a very, very large swell running, but absolutely no wind. You can see the flag hanging slack, the pennant hanging slack, and uh, there's the guys at the stern throwing all the breadfruit out, which was the first thing they got rid of after putting Bly over the side. Now, what's interesting when you look at the ship is to see some of the stuff that's going on, and Christian has given uh, orders for Robert Tinkler. He's right here up on the main Tagallant. He sent him aloft to start loosening the gaskets on that sail because they were going to try to get moving again. And, uh, and Bly had been put over the side into a longboat uh, built for 14 men. There were 19 men put into the boat with only six inches of freeboard. Uh, his Bly in the stern with the ship's master, John Fryer, who Fryer, incidentally, is the uncle of Robert Tinkler, who was up in the mast there, loosening the, uh, that stayed with the mutineers. So is Bly uh, on the tiller, or is he with Bly a hat? The, Bly had the tiller all the time. He barely slept. Uh -huh. uh, they were at sea for 44 days, and they were given food for five. And the full dress? So, with and, the, yeah, with that, the... that was just Fryer taking his coat and his hat with him. Yeah. Uh, some of them were dressed, some were not, because this happened at the crack of dawn, and totally unexpected to anybody. Uh, Bly was asleep in his cabin, and they brought him up in his nightshirt. Uh, that's how, how early in the morning it was. Uh, he was getting the men to set the mast up. You can see them getting ready to set one of the masts into the longboat. Bounty's longboat was a lugger. She carried two masts uh, with the sails on it, and uh, she was only six inches of freeboard out of the water. When Christian left the ship, Bly set sail for Tofua, and one of the reasons was is this island, you can barely see to the left here, there's like a smudge on the horizon here. You can see that, that cloud-looking thing. That was uh, from the volcano that was in the middle of erupting on that cannibal island. And they had, Bly mentioned in his log this smudge on the horizon looking like a dark smudge and so they didn't want to stop there because there were cannibals there so they set a course for timor in the dutch east indies and he took that boat with 19 people in it 3618 miles in 40 some odd days and successfully arrived with only the loss of one man but when they stopped at a, an island to get water they were set upon by the natives and uh, as there were one guy, John Norton, was loosening the grapnel on the longboat, uh, he was ashore trying to pull it loose. They had just gotten Bly back into the boat and they were ready to pull off and the natives sat on him and beat his brains out with rocks and killed him. And uh, Bly later on, typical of William Bly, wrote into his log and he says, you know, as horrible of a thing it is, he said it was almost a godsend because he was the heaviest man on the boat at 270 pounds. Wow. So it eased the boat up a little bit as far as them handling it, but what a horrible, uh, you know, thing to happen and to remember that those guys saw that happen right in front of them. Unbelievable, Paul. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you once again. This is gonna continue on with our saga. Yeah. All, All right. right, Howard, it was nice to talk to you, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to say something about this picture. Yep, and I right. can't wait for the harmony. Uh, I always get the pronunciation. Oh, the Hermione? Yeah, Hermione. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, that's coming up. Get ready, Castine, Maine. Yeah. And that's it, over and out from Camden.